If you've ever tried to set up ABC or XYZ segmentation in SAP Integrated Business Planning for Supply Chain, you probably faced the task of choosing the segmentation method that best suited your purposes. This video gives you some ideas on how the various methods work and what they're good for. Let's start with the first method, which is based on the Pareto Principle or 80-20 rule. This states that for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. Using the first method, you can identify the products that together contribute the most and the least to the overall value of a segmentation measure, such as the revenue. To achieve this, first you need to define thresholds for the segments. For example, you can say that the products with the highest numbers bringing in 70% of the overall revenue should be in segment A, those bringing in 20% should be in segment B, and the ones bringing in the remaining 10% should be in segment C. If you now run segmentation, the system sorts the items in descending order based on the percentage of the revenue produced by each and calculates the accumulated values and percentages. The item passing the threshold always belongs to the previous segment, so these five products that bring in 70% of the revenue will be assigned to segment A. These three produce the next 20%, so they'll belong to segment B, and the rest will be in segment C. The second method works on the same principle, but it calculates with actual values instead of percentages. In other words, it lets you identify the products that together contribute with the largest and smallest amounts to the overall revenue. You can say, for example, that segment A should contain the items with the highest numbers that together ring in $2,500 out of an overall revenue of about $5,000. Segment B should contain those bringing in $1,500 and segment C should contain those that bring in the remaining amount. If you now run segmentation, the system sorts the products into descending order based on the revenue produced by each and calculates the accumulated values. You can see that these four items at the top together produce $2,500, so they should be assigned to segment A. Further down in the line, these four produce $1,500, so they'll belong to segment B, and the rest will be in segment C. The third method is useful if you want the segments to be calculated based on the relative number of items that produce various shares of the overall revenue. For example, you can define that segment A should contain the top 30% of all products in terms of the revenue they bring in. There are 10 products in total, so 30% equals to 3 items. Segment B should contain the next 50% of all revenue grossing products, which equals to 5 items, and segment C should contain the remaining 2 items. If you now run segmentation, the system sorts the products into descending order based on the revenue produced by each and assigns the top three products to segment A, the next five to segment B, and the rest to segment C. It doesn't matter how much overall revenue was produced by these groups, only the ranked contribution of individual products is considered. The fourth method is based on the same principle, but it calculates with actual number of items instead of percentages. For example, the top four items in the sorted list of all revenue grossing products could be assigned to segment A, the next three to segment B, and the last three to segment C. The fifth method is simpler than the others. There's no ranking, no proportions are calculated, the sums are just compared one by one to the thresholds. For example, you can define that segment A should contain the items that each produced a revenue equal to or more than 500, Segment B should contain those that produced a revenue between 300 and 500, and Segment C should contain the remaining items. If you now run segmentation, the system simply assigns the items to three segments based on the revenue produced by each. The sixth method is the perfect solution if you're not sure what thresholds you should define. You only need to specify the number of segments, and the system uses machine learning to make those segments as homogeneous as possible with regards to the values of the segmentation measure. Let's say you want to use three segments. As a first step, the system randomly assigns the products to those segments and calculates the variance based on the differences between the total value of each product and the mean value of the segment it's assigned to. 
Then it rearranges the segments and checks the variances again. This step is iterated until the values can't be any closer to the means of the segments, which are called centers. The segment with the highest center value is then identified as segment A, the one with the second highest center value will be segment B, and so on. All three segments are as homogeneous as possible. 